This video explains how to apply a principal component analysis in the R programming language. This video is the second part of a series about principal component analysis and in the first part we have explained how to apply a principal component analysis theoretically. The speaker of this video is Chansu Kebabchi, who is a statistician and data scientist at Statistics Globe. So without too much talk, I'll hand it over to Chansu. Hey! Um, hello everyone, today I'll show you how to perform a principal component analysis in the R programming language. In this tutorial, I will walk you through the steps of implementation of PCA. Uh, so let's code it. If you haven't installed the necessary packages yet, first you should install them. In this tutorial, we will use the mass, facto extra and ggplot2 packages. Uh, you can first run this part, uncommenting it, and then you should load the libraries as follows and after this step you can import your data um, we will import the biopsy data from the mass package so let's do it this data contains biopsies of breast tumors for 699 patients and relatedly you can see that the data set has 699 uh, rows and 11 columns I will also use the CTR function to observe the variable types which matters in uh, PCA. So let's run it. And as you can see, uh, except for the ID and the class variable, all variables are numeric uh, as desired. And I can do uh, a further investigation by running the summary function and it gives more detailed information about the variables and you can see that the numeric variables are ranged between uh, 1 and 10 and also it shows that V6 uh, has 16 missing uh, values and also you can see the partitioning uh, of categories in the class variable and so on. Um, so based on this information, first I need to deal with missingness. In this tutorial I will use a list-wise deletion to keep it simple, uh, but usually it's not the best approach concerning um, bias and um, information loss and so on. Uh, so let's also run this. Now uh, I omitted the cases with missingness and I uh, renamed my data as biopsy no miss. Uh, the second data manipulation will be about discarding the categorical variables uh, which were in the first and in the last column. Um, and I will rename the data uh, as biopsy sample and this will be the final data that I will use in the principal component analysis. If you want to learn more about why we um, why we discarded the categorical variables you can check our tutorial on statistics globe called can pca be used for categorical variables since now our data is ready to go we can uh, run the pca uh, we will use the prcom function to do it setting the scale argument true which ensures that our data is standardized it is uh, important to avoid bias in our analysis. Uh, for further information, you are welcome to check our tutorial on Statistics Globe PCA using correlation metrics versus covariance metrics. So let's run this. And now uh, our uh, analysis uh, is conducted. We can print the summary and this summary gives um, the importance of components. So in the first row, you'll see the standard deviation per component. In the second row, uh, you'll uh, observe proportion of variance per uh, component. And the last row is the cumulative sum of the second row. All right. Now let's check the other data saved in the PCA object biopsy PCA. And we can check what they are by calling the names function. 
So you see that there are five more uh, elements providing some additional analysis output. Uh, the first one is the standard deviation of the components. And the second one is called rotation, but it actually um, provides the eigenvectors, which contains the loadings per variable per uh, component. And the third and the fourth elements are the uh, mean and the standard deviation of the uh, original variables. These are the values uh, used in the standardization in this analysis. And the final element is the principal component values. Let me show you like this. Principal component values, uh, also called principal component scores for all nine components. As shown, all necessary information is stored in the PCA object. In case of need, you can retrieve and do some further computations using them. Now I'll show you how to visualize these results. Uh, thanks to the Facto Extra package, you don't need to parse these stored elements manually to a function to visualize your results. Instead, you need to just plug your PCA object, which is a biopsy PCA in our case, and um, to, to into the specific function of Factor Extra package. So uh, let's take the scree plot. Uh, it's a plot that shows explain variance per component. Uh, we use it to decide on the optimal number of components uh, to retain in the analysis. Uh, we will use the fxi function of factor extra um, to obtain this plot. And as seen, uh, first we will input the P PCA object, and then um, we will set the add labels argument to true to visualize the uh, uh, variance percentages. And you can also uh, set the y limb argument to arrange the limits of the y axis. Let's run this plot and as seen all percentages are shown for all nine components. Uh, now we will continue with the by plot uh, which is uh, used to interpret the PCA results. Uh, if it's PCA by plot function uh, will be used and as you see, we input the, our uh, PCA object. And when we run this, we obtain the shown plot. You can zoom that in and see uh, how all the um, data points and the variable vectors are labeled by default. If you want to suppress the labels of the data points, uh, which is usually preferred since this uh, view is a bit crowded. Uh, you can set the label argument to um, var, uh, which, which is uh, all by default, and then rerun it. And now you will obtain a biplot whose data point labels are suppressed. Okay. Uh, and another useful thing to do with the biplots is to uh, color the data points by a class or grouping variable. Here in our dataset, we have the class variable, which shows the type of the tumor. And we will use the Habiash uh, argument to do it. And when we run it, you will see the colored data points like this. And these uh, coloring are based on the default settings. If you, if you want to change the colors, mm -hmm. then you should um, the call war argument to change the colors of the vectors and the scale color manual function of ggplot to set um, data point colors uh, manually. So when we run this, now you see that our colors has changed and I think it's a better visual compared to the default one. 
And uh, by generating this biplot, we conclude our tutorial. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like it. See you in the next one. Thanks again to Chansu Kebabchi for recording this video on how to apply a principal component analysis in our program. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel of Statistics Globe to be informed about the next video of this series, which will be about how to apply a principal component analysis in Python. Thanks a lot and see you next time.